In this Cinema 4D Quick Tip, we're going to look at how to control the first, the last, or every nth clone using the formula factor in Cinema 4D. So the first thing we need to do is add a formula effector to the scene. So with my cloner selected, I'm just going to go down to the MoGraph menu, choose the Effector submenu, and add a new formula effector. And of course, because the cloner was already selected, the formula effector was already applied in the effectors list. Now a lot of people get scared of the formula effector because it involves math, and by default it has a formula that includes a sign function and a bunch of variables that you might not understand. We're going to get rid of that function and we're going to just simplify this a little bit. So here we have the variables that are available and the only one we're going to worry about for the purposes of this tutorial is the object index, which is ID. In Cinema 4D, each clone has an ID and it's based on its order that it's created. So this clone here at the beginning is going to be ID 0 and we're going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 straight up the line. So if I go in here in the formula and type ID, it's going to output 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And we're going to remove this scale parameter here, so we're just working with position. So when the formula outputs 0 for this first clone, it's going to multiply 0 times 50, and it gets 0. So it's not going to move this clone at all. Here it's going to multiply 1 times 50, and it's going to move the clone over 50. Here it's going to multiply 2 times 50 and get 100 and move the clone over, and so on and so forth. So if I want to control just the first clone, I change my formula to ID equals zero. And now what happens is this is going to result in one if the ID equals zero. So one times 50 is going to move that brick over 50 units. For all the other clones, the ID is not equal to zero, and so that's going to result in zero. So it's going to multiply zero times 50, and it's not going to move the clones at all, because zero times anything is zero. Now if I want to control the last clone, all I need to do is do ID equals count. But remember, it's zero based, so I have to do count minus one. But there's another little trick here. I need to make sure that it evaluates count minus one before it evaluates the equivalency. So I put this in parentheses. And now I'm controlling just the last clone. So when the ID equals the total clone count minus one, We've got the last clone equals 1 times 50, and it moves the clone over 50. If we want to create a staggered pattern, what we need to do here is modulate our ID. The modulo function is basically the remainder that you get after you divide one number by another. So to modulate, what we do is we type mod, open parent, ID, and then a semicolon, and the value that we want to modulate by. So I'm going to put a 2 so we can control every other clone, and then a close parent. And now you can see that every other clone is affected, because when the ID equals 0 and we divide that by 2, we get 0. When the ID equals 1 and we divide that by 2, the remainder is 1. When the ID equals 2 and we divide that by 2, the remainder is 0. When the ID equals 3 and we divide that by 2, the remainder is 1, and so on and so forth. So if we want to control every third clone, we just go ahead and change this to mod ID 3. And now we're staggering based on a 3-clone pattern. And a 4-clone pattern would just be using 4, and so on and so forth. But what if we only want every third clone to be changed? We don't want to have this staggered pattern. We just want every third clone to pop out. Well, to do that, we go mod ID 3 equals 0. And now, only if the mod of the ID and 3 is 0 are those clones going to pop out. And of course, if we wanted the inverse of this, we wanted all of the other clones to pop out, we could change this to mod ID 3 is greater than 0. And now we get that result. So that's the basics of the formula effector. Don't worry about the sign function and all that craziness for now. Just worry about the ID variable, the count variable, and the modulo function, and you'll have a lot more power in your hands.